so you're going hump, yeah? Yeah, we're going to hump, uh. Maybe you want to remember, sir, I have to too. You'll be expensive, man. Cheaper, sir, no you're, problem. You, you're standing here at the first class, Kevin, man, looking, fishing. Yeah, no fishing, You're fishing, sir. man. You're I, I'm from hump, yeah. <laughs> fishing for foreigners. So there we had it, uh, rickshaw driver had already jumped into the first class compartment. Namaste Dolsto, a train trip here in India is an incredible adventure that you should not miss. But it's not so straightforward. So tonight I'm going to take you on my train journey and show you everything you need to know and tell you about everything you need to avoid as well. So let's go for a tour of the station, I'll show you what's available at an Indian railway station. Then I'll show you how to find your train, we'll board the train and I'll show you what you can expect when you get on an Indian train and I give you a bunch of safety tips so you can travel safely and confidently on the Indian railway system. Come, let's go from Bengaluru to Hampi. Now when you're entering the railway station there's a couple of things, a couple of scams you really need to be careful of as a foreigner and these have both happened to me. The first one, there could be a fake ticket collector or a ticket checker in the railway station here. Usually he's at the front door there or he's standing behind security to look official. And he'll stop foreigners and he'll say, show me your ticket. And of course, there'll be something wrong with your ticket and you have to follow him to get your ticket fixed and pay him some money. There's nothing wrong with your ticket. It's a scam. And that has actually happened to me. That is most common on the Delhi to Agra route, the Taj Mahal route. And they get you because it's like, that train leaves at like 5.45 in the morning. So you're so tired, you're not suspecting anything, you're thinking this guy's helping you and that he's an official. But he's not. Okay? So do as what, no? One, uh, one not up here or... Oh, I understand, huh? You want money for medical fees? Cancer, cancer, cancer. Oh, you've got a lot of receipts here. Yeah, sorry bro, I don't believe you. Yeah, so you've also got guys here um, asking for money and they'll show you fake medical bills. And uh, yeah, it'll always come up to foreigners. Manu, come. Chale. No, no, yes, scam, hey, no? No, no, no. The other thing that happens here is pickpockets. And there's a sign for it right in front of me, actually. And so how it works is some guy or some girls will brush up against you and you'll feel your pocket's a bit lighter because they've lifted your phone or your wallet. And it's not always guys that do that. Girls are pickpockets as well because you don't expect them, no? Huh? You don't expect them to be pickpockets. So yeah, watch out for fake ticket inspectors and pickpockets here. Now, let me show you around the station. Now there is a police station at some railway stations and if you have any issues, you can come to the police station and talk with them. Not all stations have a police station though, but the bigger stations will. Throughout the station, you'll find boards like this where you can check your train number and it's gonna tell you what platform you're on. You've got three languages usually. English, because we're in Canada, you have the Canada state language and then you'll also have English as well and some advertisements like this. So you can come here, look up your train number and find what platform you're on. Before I show you how to board the train and inside it, here's what you'll typically find at a large station in India. There's filtered drinking water, although I don't take the risk with it. We've got a range of waiting rooms from free to executive paid lounges and also female only waiting rooms. If you've got a long layover, there's dormitories here. And this particular station has an incredible array of food options, a chemist, a photocopy shop, and even a gaming zone. I've never seen that anywhere else in India, but this is Bangalore after all. Then we have the multiple train platforms where you'll find more toilets and snack options. If you want a more in-depth tour of what's available at a station, watch my rural Indian train station tour next. Behind me is the chief ticket inspector office. So if you're worried about your ticket, come and meet the chief ticket inspector and they'll help you. Don't trust nobody chatting to you around the station, all right? There's offices for everybody here. There's police, there's ticket inspector, there's station master. There's a lot of people here that will help you, official people. Even army is here as well, as you can see. The other incredible thing here at railway stations is there's sometimes free Wi-Fi and like super fast Wi-Fi too, like there is here at this railway station. Now everything you can see here 
there's three languages, Kannada, Hindi, and English. And the region, the state language will change depending on which state you're in. So it's very easy to find things because English is everywhere here. So we've read the board and we know what platform a train is on. And uh, yeah, just walk into platform eight now where the Humpy Express will be at 9.50 p.m. We'll be here for 10 minutes. So you've got 10 minutes to get on and get settled. Some stations, the trains will stop for only two minutes. Usual stop times is two minutes. But because this is a big station, a lot of people to get on, so 10 minutes. All right, we found it the platform eight and it is really, really busy here. Now, if you look up your train before the journey, you can see where exactly your coach is. Our coach is a couple of coaches behind the engine, so we can roughly decide like whereabouts we should be standing, because you'll find the engine on one end of the platform. And on the platform, there's a bunch of seats, and um, you've got shops like this where you can get tea and basic snacks as well. And if you're buying food and drinks, especially from like street vendors, on the platforms, always check your change. It's very common to be shortchanged here in India. One other tip, you can ask the shopkeepers where your train compartment will be, which end of the track it might be on. The shopkeepers along here see the same trains every night, so yeah, they know how the trains arrive and leave. And now that our train is nearly here, you can see that the signs along the platform have all changed. It's telling you the train number, and then it's also telling you the coach number, okay? So we're looking for H1, and we're at S2, which is sleeper two. All right, we're at A1 right now, you can see it up there, and we're still going, we're going towards HA1. That is our coach that we're gonna get on. And yeah, it's all signposted along the platform 10 minutes before the train arrives. So we're here now, and we can just walk straight into the train and our seats are B5 and B6. So uh, yeah, let me give you a tour of the train now. All right, so the train has not lined up with the numbers on the platform. We had to walk two coaches up, and here we go. So here we have our train here, and all the signboards are working. We've got Hindi, Canada, and English. So this is going Mysore to Hubali, and we are in HA1. Your train might not always say the exact place you're going to, like Humpy. Humpy's so famous, but it's not on the board here, all right? And on the windows here, you can even see the seat number. So that's our seat there, five and six. All right, and so we can see up here it says B5 and 6. And this is my beautiful wife, Manu. <laughs> and yeah, this is the coach. We actually got a couple's coach, babe. Yep. How sweet is that? Sometimes you'll be sharing with two more people. But we managed to get a couple's coach, which I wasn't expecting. So here we have two beds. You've got the, the bed spreads here and a pillow drink bottle holders up here. Some places to store your bags and also this is how you can climb up onto the top bunk which I'll be sleeping on. Sleep on the top bunk if you are tall uh, in the other coaches because in the other coaches there's no wall and your feet will usually just be above people's heads. If you're on the bottom coach your f people are going to smack into your feet if they're long. Okay it's a very very simple room and there's just a table to eat on or whatever and some some cushions here as well. And we have a charger. And there's only mobile phone charging between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. And yeah, here's a mirror. And so I can also show you, there's only a few cabins here. And then I can show you into, this is AC2. And yeah, there's just, there's just more people to each cabin, that's all. And there's no, um, no walls like we have in the next one. But there's curtains, so you can, you can block it off. But that's the difference, there's not, not really much difference. We're on our way to Humpy now from Bengaluru. It's a 400 kilometer trip, 
and it's going to take us nine hours so we're going to sleep here overnight and this is a first class compartment on a normal indian train this is what they are like i know you would have all seen the luxury trains in india and yes they exist but this is a very standard first class compartment on an indian train if you want to take the luxury trains, you're, you'll be paying a lot more than this. This was three, around 3,000 rupees for both me and my wife. Uh, so yeah, just 1,500 rupees each. So yeah, it's really cheap to have this private room um, to ourselves. And it obviously saves us more than staying at a hotel, which might be like 5,000 rupees a night. So yeah, great value. Now, how to book tickets. So start off at the IRCTC website. This is the Indian Railways booking website and you've got three options there. You can book under the foreigner quota. That means ticket reservations for you open 365 days before your train leaves. This is a special foreigner quota that you can take if you're outside India. If you miss that, you can book under the general quota. These tickets go on sale 120 days before the trip. So if the foreigner quota tickets are sold out and the general tickets are sold out, You've got one more option, it's called Tatkal, and this is last minute bookings. These Tatkal tickets go on sale at 10 a.m. the day before the train leaves. And they cost a little bit more, but you can book those through the IRCTC website as well. So yeah, go to that website, sign up, and you've got three options to get a train ticket. Just book as soon as you can, okay, because trains fill up really, really fast here in India. Now, there are different types of classes on the Indian railways. So you've got first class, which we're in here. You've got two AC, you've got three AC, and you've got sleeper. Now as a foreigner, you'll probably want to be in an air conditioned cabin. So that's first class, two AC, or three AC. And two AC and three AC are perfectly fine for traveling in. Just the further you go down the classes, the less privacy you have basically, and the more people that are around, so the more opportunity to be sleeping with um, snorers. That's, that's my, biggest, my biggest concern. Uh, but you can bring earplugs, and I would suggest bringing earplugs. There's always some uncle snoring on trains, nah. And I actually usually travel 2AC or 3AC because first class tickets can sometimes cost as much as an airfare, so then you might as well fly. The AC just came, I'm so happy. Hi, Namaste Ji. Namaste. Under are you? Name, uh, name Karl hai. Carl and Manisha. You learned Hindi. Hindi. Yeah, my Biwi hai, but wo Haryana se hai. Okay, right, right. Or aap ticket ticket collector hai? Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Main Canada nahi baus Maaf kijiye. Thank you. Bye. So that was just uh, the ticket collector. He will come and check everybody's tickets. Uh, he'll walk to the train and do that. Oh, the train's getting going now. We're leaving Bengaluru city. And 2AC and 3AC, those are perfectly fine for foreigners to sleep in. I usually take 2AC or 3AC, especially if I'm traveling alone. And if you can't get a seat in 2AC or 3AC, you can take sleeper class. It's the cheapest and cockroach. There's a cockroach. Marga, dead. Um, yeah, there's also sleeper class. Sleeper class does not have AC and it's usually very, very lively. But I have taken sleeper as well and it was just fine in the winter months. But um, can get a bit windy and a bit cold in there or a bit hot if it's summer. Now how to keep your valuables safe, especially if you're not in a cabin and you can't lock your door. So when I'm sleeping in 2AC or 3AC, I'll put my valuables in a small backpack and I'll put them up here in the corner next to my head and I'll sleep with them just like that. I'll sleep with my head next to my valuables. Do not sleep with them on this side where people are walking past because they can just swipe your bag. Put your head towards the window side and keep your valuables safe up here. You can put your bag under here just fine. And if you really want, you can chain it. There's little chaining points here as well that you can chain your bags to. But I've never bothered with that because all my valuables are always next to my head while I sleep overnight on a train. I think I should give you guys a quick tour of the bathrooms. Okay, honestly, nothing to write home about. Very, very average toilet. It just drops onto the tracks, literally. And it's quite small in here. And there's a hand wash and some soap there. Yeah, very, very small. Hey, 
and then another place to wash your hands here. All right, we've been given fresh sheets, so it's time to make the bed. This packet contains two bed sheets and one face towel, okay. Well, there's definitely two bed sheets, but there's no face towel like it says on the packet. How do you know which goes on top and which goes on bottom, babe? I think the thicker one will go on bottom, eh? And these bed sheets, they're from Cardi and Village Industries Commission. So these, what is that, babe? And you can get the sheet right under here as well. It's pretty, pretty well designed, but I mean, yeah, you can do a pretty good job. All right, my pillow, my bed sheet, and then we have a blanket too. All done, ready to sleep. It's not the prettiest, but it does the job and it's damn comfortable. There's something really nice about sleeping on a train and having that feeling of like, I don't know, it's like you're in the womb again, nah? No? That slight rocking movement as, as you travel and sleep. In a cradle, you mean? In a cradle? Yeah. No, and in the womb, because your mum used to like rock around a bit. <laughs> Let me show you my bed and I'll show you a few cool features of this cabin as well. So these beds are wider and longer than 2AC and 3AC because in those other two classes my feet go off the end, my feet go off the end and people always bang their heads into my feet during the night time. Now let me show you the lights here. So we have, look at this, a blue light. Manu, do you need a blue light? Yes. Okay, the baby down. And see, this needs a blue light. And there's also a reading light as well up here. And she has one down in her bed as well. So, yeah, good night, guys. And I will see you in the morning. Hey, good morning, guys. We're nearly at Humpy. Look out there. I can see rice paddies, coconut trees, and to know when to get off. Just set your alarm like 20 or 30 minutes before your scheduled arrival time and then check your Google Maps, check your GPS location and you'll see how close you are to your station. Oh man, I slept like a baby, I feel so good. And yeah, you're gonna see exit out the door like we're gonna do any second now. We're just arriving now and let's see who meets us at the station because at these popular stations like Humpy and like Agra, you can often find a lot of touts hassling you as well. And in these smaller places, you will not get an Uber. So you're gonna have to deal with the rickshaw drivers. So know how far you're going and roughly how much you should pay. Oh, sorry. It's okay, don't worry, man. Yeah. So you're going Humpty, huh? Yeah, we're going to Humpty. Uh, so how are you going? Taxi? Yeah. You have taxi or no? No, not yet. We'll find one. Maybe you want to remember, sir. I have tip too. You'll be expensive, man. Cheaper, sir. No problem. You're, you're standing here at the first class, Kevin, man. Looking, fishing. Yeah, no fishing, You're fishing, sir. man. I, I'm from Humpty, yeah. <laughs> you're fishing, bro. No, no fishing, sir. Fishing for foreigners. I think it's small price. No, no. So there he had it, uh, Richard Driver had already jumped into the first class compartment because he knows that's where he's going to find his, his uh, foreign tourists who he can charge more than the local tourists in the other compartments. So um, rather than taking like a guy from inside the train or a guy from just outside the train, we're just going to go to the rickshaw area and find a guy and actually bargain for the price. We'll ask a few different people for different prices and we'll get the best deal. Always do that. Especially because I'm with Manisha. Um, we'll, we'll find a better deal than taking me on the train. Sir, how much you want to pay? I no, man, no, man, we're gonna... <laughs> how much you want to pay? 
That's why I will take some prize, no problem. No, no, we don't need your help, man. Don't worry. Really, no problem. Our friend, our friend's back. <laughs> like a whole team, you know. We found the rickshaw drivers now, and there's never any shortage of them. There must be at least a hundred drivers here, so yeah, you're gonna get the best price if you just come out to here and bargain with a few drivers, all right? Ah, banana farmhouse. Humpy Road near Kanara Bank. Yeah. I don't have one, it's on Humpy Road only. होटल में पूछा मैडम होटल में पूछा हमारा नाम है and, and now that guy's getting real angry at us who found us he wanted us uh, we didn't even ask him the price because I knew he'd just be trying to cheat us if he was jumping onto the first class compartment straight away so we found a driver just 150 rupees for 10 kilometers and the other driver got very angry at us the guy who found us on the first class compartment because he thought we were his meal ticket for the day but we went out and we found a real driver and just tell us what that driver was telling you the guy who from the first class compartment he yeah uh, he said people are not very nice to tourists here but uh, i'm being nice to you you're yeah. not appreciating it <laughs> yeah sure 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 so a guy who says something like that you know he's trying to get you into his his taxi and yeah. you know he's probably not the nice guy so yeah i'm sure we'll just be fine here <laughs> So we have to look at everyone thinking he might do this to us. And when this guy jumps on through the train, he shouldn't be on the train. Nah? That's not fair. This place is pretty. Look at the banana plantations behind us. All right, we just found a little dosa shack to eat at. And just to talk about the rickshaw drivers again, they can be really, really pushy. So just say no and stay firm to that if you don't want their services. If you do want their services, then good, because they will look after you and you'll get that extra service from these guys in these, these tourist towns. So enjoy your train trip and have an incredible time here in India.